I love this story. I love this film. Um, I love playing trailer. Uh, of course, Jeff Barnaby is a huge name in, in, in our community and in, in, in world cinema increasingly. And when I heard that he was making this new film, I was like, oh my God, how do I, you know, how do I get on this movie? Um, and then I auditioned, and then he liked the audition, then I got, came for a call back, and then I was finally able to read the script, right? And it blew my mind. I said, I have to be part of this. Uh, so for me, I think the important thing is that Jeff makes really entertaining movies, like movies that just hold our, our interests long after the final credits have rolled. And I knew that when he delved into this kind of a genre, he's, he's a huge pop culture guy. Like he understands the genre, he understands horror. Um, that I knew that we would, we'd, you know, that his bona fides would be like impeccable as we approached, you know, the, these, these ideas, these notions. And I, I wasn't disappointed. It was, it was really extraordinary. And obviously, it's an, a very appealing prospect to work with Jeff. Can you talk a little bit more about your character specifically and what it was about that role as a storyteller that most interested you? Mm. Uh, I've, I've had really interesting roles to play in the last few years, and a lot of my characters are quite broken. Um, Trailer is exactly that guy. He's, uh, he's a terrible dad. Uh, he's a lousy husband. He's a failed sheriff. It actually takes uh, the end of the world. Um, for him to figure out how to be a better person. So I think with, with Jeff helping shape my performance and my own work, it's a character I haven't played before and I'm, I'm really excited about it. I'm curious what you think this film has to say about identity and survival because those seem to be both quite powerful themes throughout. Yeah. Uh, for me, I think, I think the, the zombie genre is really it's apropos to our whole experience, right? Because as, as indigenous people, we've already survived an apocalypse. We've, we've survived the colonial apocalypse. It, it decimated our communities, it erased our language, it nearly erased us. So when we talk about survival, and, and these, that's, the, that's the primary idea with these films, like how do we survive? How do we escape one horrible moment to the next? Um, it resonates with us because it's like, yeah, that's 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 our entire history. I mean, obviously, a, a powerful uh, metaphor, though, for, no doubt. I'm, I'm curious, when you look back on the experience of making this film, is there one mess, uh, one memory that's most precious to you? Is there a moment where you smile the most when you think back on it? Um, it's the community of actors that that I work with. Uh, these are extraordinary and and incredibly talented performers and. Some of them I've worked with for the first time, and I'm, I'm so delighted by that memory, by that chance to work with them all. I play the role of Joss. Uh, she is this uh, incredible indigenous woman. She represents so many indigenous women I know. Uh, she's a single mom, she's a nurse, uh, she's a survivor, and she works magic every day. I am just beyond honored to play this role. And um, I, tried my best to, I tried my best to emulate all of these beautiful indigenous women that I know. Can you talk about just the concept as a whole of this film and, and what it is about that story that resonated most with you as a storyteller? Gosh, well, I've been watching Jeff Barnaby's work for, for a very long time. Um, I myself, as a, as a director, have been very inspired by his work. I think that he's laid some very important groundwork for other Indigenous filmmakers. Um, he is visionary, he is political, he is stubborn in the best way. Um, and so, working with Jeff was was incredible and the film itself really takes the colonial narrative it takes um, the zombie genre and and melds them together in this beautifully subversive wildly entertaining um, world that he builds uh, and I yeah I, I really hope Canadian audiences come and, and see this film because I think it's really important what does it mean for you to be here at TIFF and at Midnight Madness wow it's it, it doesn't even feel Real, actually, it's very surreal to be a part of um, a part of something so groundbreaking and and uh, and, and world changing. I think for me, like when you first read a script, it's kind of hard to to grasp the whole outer view of things. So for me, it was just talking to Jeff and talking about his history and growing up, and also talking about other filmmakers that we loved. Mostly, just Jeff as a director is what attracted me to it. And obviously, um, the finished results are here at TIFF. What does it mean for you to be a part of this festival showcasing the film on this platform? It's really crazy. I'm just 
uh, it's just surreal. <laughs> I've never done anything like this before, so I'm just really happy to be here and support everyone. And I think obviously this is a film that works on a lot of different levels, has a lot of different themes to it. Can you talk a little bit about what you're most hoping overall an audience takes away from the film? I think, I think just because Indigenous history is so kind of bleak and excruciating, I'm really happy that there's a kind of refreshing film that really shows things in a different, maybe more colourful way, really in your face. And so I'm hoping the audience can just maybe look at things a bit differently than they've maybe thought about things before. I'm curious, did the process of making this film and dealing with the subject, did it change your perspective on those issues? Did it make you rethink anything that you previously... Um... Not rethink, but just I, I feel like at least in my high school system I didn't really learn anything and I'm you know I'm white I don't have any history with this so I, I I think just being around all the other actors and the producers and everyone it was just constant learning constant I, I just stayed quiet a lot and listened it was really really good for me yeah Talking about being around other people when you look back at your time on set is there one memory that makes you smile the most oh my god not one memory there are so many probably stone horse who plays my, uh, Forrest's dad, a grandfather. He's crazy in the best way. Him just like making jokes the whole time. That was all the memories with him. I'm just crying laughing, so probably that. My character is basically, uh, in Micmac language, it's called Gishigu, which means old man. And um, I think he, well, unfortunately, a lot of my life was like his life in the movie which is a horror story to, for a lot of it, but he manages somehow to become a human being through this whole thing. But at the same time, he understands that it's a cold world, blood, no mercy. And that's just the way it has to be sometimes. And unfortunately, when a lot of those very terrible, traumatic things happen to you in your life, you bury your emotions so deep that you never get them back again. Believe me, that happens. And hopefully, when I was living this vicarious existence with uh, Gishigu during this film, that I was able to communicate, you know, you've got to let that river flow. And sometimes you have to stop it. And life, is, unfortunately, in a, in a lot of places is is life and death. Your decisions have to be life and death. But at the same time, there's that compassion for no, no, because no matter what happened there, this is still home. Which is why towards the end of the movie, Gishigu is not going to leave. This is where it's going to end. And it's ironic because how many of us ever had the chance in their life to say, here's where I'm going to die. This is where it's going to end. And I think hopefully that translated in a movie. The twist in this film, uh, in terms of a zombie film, because I know they're everywhere. Like, um, it's kind of like that saturation of like uh, the idea of like uh, the world falling apart. But this one specifically is based on a social dynamics and happening for let's say 375 years, I guess, since occupation. So is it that kind of twist that, that deals deals with the relation between non-native and native people. You talk about the balance of tone in this film because obviously you know there's lots of different levels there's horror there's symbolism there's you know real world uh, reflection can you talk a little bit about what people can expect from the film overall? Well I've read the scripts and I we shot the scenes I haven't seen the full movie at all. I've seen 11 seconds <laughs> of my own personal uh, additional recordings, but uh, that's a really great question in, in terms of like how this is going to come out. Because you know we, know we always know that anything can happen from performance to actual what we see on the screen. So uh, yeah, looking forward myself. As are we. Um, can you tell us just a little bit more about your character, where he fits into proceedings overall? My character Bumper is kind of the... the um, he's the force. He's the force that's in, in within this group of um, people who are in surviving, trying to survive in during this plague that's happening. But he's also kind of like a, 
the cultural the cultural stone because he he speaks the language throughout the film. He's the only person I think throughout the film who I know for sure. Actually, um, we actually fought at one point not to speak any English, and and throughout this film I speak Mi'kmaq, and I had some really amazing coaches to like tackle the language because. Um, as we know, like a lot of the traditional languages are dying, and this is when it, you know it's a part of keeping it alive is by making it part of you know it is every it is a part of everyday life when it comes to being a native person, but not when it comes to being part of like films. And finally, like, I think part of it is having that language within the film. And I mean, in terms of preserving that rich cultural legacy, how big a tool do you think film is and how much does that kind of representation actually matter? In, in, in keeping the language within the film? I mean, in, in terms of keeping the language, the culture, the traditions, that kind, what, what does that representation mean, do you think? Well, I think the basis is, I think the importance of the language is that it's the central, the central basis aside from ceremony as you have ceremony and language. I think it's important to keep the language alive because that's it's one of our bases. Yeah, it's 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 disguised as a zombie genre film, but there's a lot being said in the subtext and also <laughs> on screen with uh, the characters that we've built. I think um, with uh, Trailer's character, he's he's a father holding on to tradition and he wants to keep the community safe. And, and and protect anybody who needs who needs protect he's that guy who's chivalrous he's a knight he's like anybody who needs help I got you no matter what race religion or creed you are and there's also ambiguous uh, ambiguous like notions that are kind of subtle but also there's also my character who's not so subtle who will be like straight up we're native we're immune to this why are we bringing in outsiders into our community when they can very well kill us. What do you do there? I don't think of it as a fusion of concepts, right? Because I'm native, so I don't look at it as like uh, I'm, I'm fusing one concept with another because I am that I am that thing. I am native, I am coming from that perspective. So really it was just my take on the zombie genre. And I think once you put a native person on screen, it's going to kind of take a political stance. So I tried to let that be. I tried to just let it kind of exist in the writing. I didn't really want to put my, my stamp on it. I didn't want to preach to the audience. I tried to integrate it within the story, whatever political aspects you were going to get. I was trying to integrate it within the story without trying to flex too hard or, or wag a finger or preach to anybody. So for me, it was a matter of just making a good zombie film first and just letting me be letting me be native just by virtue of osmosis i was going to take the genre the genre and and absorb it and kind of represent it the way that i saw it through my 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 background's eyes i guess that's what everybody does that's 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 why romero said his his film in pittsburgh you know what i mean for me i had just had a son and it was about fathers really and for me if you're gonna make a horror film you're gonna make it about the thing you're most scared of and the thing I was most scared of at the time was being a shitty dad <laughs> so that's what the whole film is about it's about kind of crappy dads trying to redeem themselves I mean that's really what it is if you're gonna strip away all the zomb zombie stuff and all the genre stuff it was really about the the representation of family and fathers and kind of how the background of their lifestyle has has kind of torn them apart and it was just uh, sometimes it takes the end of the world to bring out the best in a person and in this case it was these guys trying to be good dads because you you have three generations of dads on screen you have the grandfathers you have the the new fathers and you have the the, the dads that are you know kind of failed and that's to me, it was the characterization of that story that removed it from the zombie genre in the sense that, you know, you take away all the kills, it was that story that could stand up on its own. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Is that from the Goonies? Nice.
Hey! hey.